to look at changes in the 2022 edition of TMS uh, 402, the Masonry Society standard there. So I like starting with uh, this slide here to show you the pages versus the year of the code. Um, as Maria mentioned, I was chair in 2016. So um, maybe one of the biggest highlights of my career is that there is a structural code produced with fewer pages than the previous edition. People ask if uh, we used a smaller font. No, we did not, but I did think about that. We uh, were not able to quite maintain that in 2022, but at least our slope is small. And we did go to a six-year cycle. Um, previously, we had been on roughly a uh, um, three-year cycle. But things, um, I just really respect all of you that have to keep up with so many different codes and all the changes. So we have gone to a six-year cycle. And the next edition will be 2028 of TMS 402. The three biggest changes are probably the introduction of tension and compression control sections and strength design. Our veneer chapter was completely rewritten. And we added an appendix on glass fiber reinforced polymer reinforcement. So we'll look at those in particular, but also a lot of other changes here. Just if we go chapter by chapter here, we're going to focus on the chapters primarily at moderate or major changes here. General analysis and design, chapter four is things like modulus of elasticity and some basic member properties. Chapter five on structural members, columns, beams, pilasters, et cetera. Chapter six is exactly what it says. There are some significant changes in the seismic design requirements, particularly related to special reinforced shear walls, they'll mention. Um, some moderate changes with ASD. Um, strength design, the big change again is going to tension and compression controlled sections. We will not discuss pre-stressed autoclaved aerator masonry. Masonry infills was moved from an appendix to chapter 12, which caused veneer to go to chapter 13. And as I said, that was completely rewritten. Um, empirical design, appendix A, was uh, deleted uh, in this edition. Again, we moved masonry infill there. And we did add um, some glass fiber reinforced polymer um, appendix uh, design of masonry reinforced with this. This is internal reinforcing, not the external reinforcing that's often used in retrofit. Um, so just jumping in, we'll jump first to uh, uh, chapter four here, the general analysis and design. And we added this table on the net shear. We, we just, in calculating the shear strength, the shear stress, we just had A sub N V, but it was never really very well defined. So actually, I was able to work with a few practicing engineers in developing this table as a result of their questions. So perhaps the biggest takeaway here is uh, please uh, send your questions and comments on TMS 402602, and we will try to address them. So um, out of plane, very rarely controls with shear, but we define it for both fully and partially grouted. In plane, we'll look at that. Um, flanged walls, it's really just this region here that takes the shear. And then beams. So look at the partially grouted wall in plane and then beams. The net shear area is the area of the face shells where you have mortar and the grouted cells. Typically, we have face shell bedding, uh, mortar only on the face shells. So these cross webs generally do not have mortar, so those are not included. Just this here. The easiest way to calculate the area is with an equivalent thickness. The equivalent thickness is a bit different than the equivalent thickness for um, fire resistance, but it's basically taking this net area and just dividing by the length there. This does slightly underestimate it because essentially you're ignoring this last, last cell here. So if you want to sharpen your pencil, you can get a little bit greater area than uh, the equivalent thickness there. Um, also then for beams, what we have here, for shear walls, the, the net shear area is based on the entire length of the shear wall, B sub V. Um, that's the way our equations were sort of empirically developed, was looking at the length of the shear wall, the difference between the length of the shear wall and the distance to the um, 
extreme fiber or extreme tension reinforcement is pretty small for most shear walls. But for beams, um, our equations match better if you use B, as in like concrete depth to the um, centroid of the tension reinforcement. And we also said you can have a partially grouted shear or a beam, excuse me. Now, for this example, you probably just go ahead and grout that one course, not leave one course ungrouted. But if you had a deeper one, you could um, sometimes just grout the bottom and the top there. So the shear area is just the phase shells. We don't have a lot of research, but this conservative using that. And if um, shear reinforcement is required, the beam is required to be fully uh, grouted. 